Ladies and gentlemen, the chairman of the board of NBC, Mr. Grant Tinker. Good evening, and welcome to the third annual Television Academy Hall of Fame presentation. Those of you who've watched this program in the past are aware that this is not just another awards show. There are no envelopes, please, no squeals of surprise, no zooming in on the faces of losers. Everyone here being honored tonight is a winner. What we are about here is celebrating the achievements of a few singular people. It's a chance for all of us who've been the happy beneficiaries of their special talents to say thank you in a public and tangible way. Joining the roster of 14 outstanding individuals previously inducted into the Hall of Fame are seven who leave giant footprints in the sands of television time. We begin tonight's ceremonies with a film clip from the studio of one of our honorees, one of the most charming actors in any medium. Chim chimini, chim chimini, chim chim chiri. A sweet fish as lucky as lucky can be. Chim chimini, chim chimini, chim chim chiru. Good luck will rub off when I shake hands with you. Oh, blow me a kiss. And that's lucky too. Ladies and gentlemen, Dick Van Dyke. Good evening. According to the lyric of that song, good luck will rub off if I shake hands with you, and good luck certainly rubbed off on me the day I shook hands with the man responsible for my being in that wonderful film, Walt Disney. He led such a rich and rewarding life and touched so many other lives in the process, once tempted to treat his story almost like a fairy tale, and far be it for me to resist the temptation, so here goes. The adventures of Walter Elias Disney. Once upon a time in Chicago, Illinois, on December 8th, 1901 to be precise, a child was born to Elias and Flora Disney. His name was Walter, and a short time after his birth, the family moved to a quaint little farm near Marceline, Missouri. After grammar school in Kansas City, young Walter went on to McKinley High. But the man who ended up with honorary degrees from such institutions of higher learning as Harvard, Yale, UCLA, and USC never graduated from high school. He ran off instead to serve as an ambulance driver for the Red Cross during World War I. Coming back from overseas, he spent a number of years as a commercial artist and apprentice cartoonist in Kansas City. And he also started some experimental work in a new form of cartooning called film animation. During a long train ride, he recalled a little mouse that used to sit on his drawing board back home, and he sketched it to pass the time. He created a scenario for the character, and after a couple of false starts, he finally got it the way he wanted it, and the cartoon Steamboat Willie was born. The mouse went on to star in over 100 cartoon shorts over the next 10 years, and became a symbol of the Disney dynasty that was to come. I could say at this point, they lived happily ever after, but that isn't even half the story. Another great adventure awaited our hero. He had himself a nice little studio and he was doing well. But he felt in his bones there was more to life than making short cartoons. He wanted to make long films and animation, something they told him had never been done. So, of course, he did it. While all this was happening, he found time for a personal life too. He married a lovely lady named Lillian and made her his queen. They had two beautiful princesses named Diane and Sharon, and everything seemed to be fine in the kingdom. However, as the princesses grew, Walt would have to amuse them, and he would take them to the local pony ride. It was there that he had the notion of building an amusement park that would please not only children, but the entire family. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. Here age relives fond memories of the past, and here youth may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Disneyland was partly financed by some magic beans supplied by ABC television. In return, Walt didn't give them a cow, 
but he did give them a top-notch television series called Disneyland, Disneyland. with Walt as the host. And you wish upon a star. It was an instant hit, went on to be one of the most honored and longest-running series on television, and featured a clever mix of documentaries, action adventures, cartoons, and nature stories. Born on a mountaintop in Tennessee, Greenest King Walt also introduced a national craze on one of those shows, it dealt with another legendary figure named Davy Crockett, and the definition of deprived in 1955 was any child who didn't have at least one coonskin cat. We are the Merry Mountain. The kingdom grew with the addition of a group of Moppets who sang and danced and wore another type of unusual headgear. They were called the Mouseketeers. King Walt moved his magic kingdom to the NBC television network in 1961, and it helped to spur the sale of another miracle, color TV sets. It was during this period that Walt reached even further into his bag of wonders and came up with Disney World, an eastern kingdom, to match in splendor and excitement his west coast land of enchantment. Each time the king embarked on a new venture, the scoffers and the skeptics said, this time you've gone too far, you're going to fall off the beanstalk. You'll be swallowed by the whale. You'll be cursed by the wicked witch of overexpansion. But each time, though hovering on the brink of disaster, he managed to triumph. And one of his greatest triumphs was the experimental prototype city of tomorrow, better known as Epcot. And the story continues with Disney having its own cable channel and the Disney TV movie happily ensconced on ABC on a weekly basis, delivering family entertainment on a grand scale. Every fairy tale has a cast of supporting players, and in the case of Walt Disney, thanks to his long-standing devotion, the supporting players came to be as well known as the star.
for a lifetime of dedicated service to the cause of wholesome family entertainment, for his vision and stamina in bringing to fruition many revolutionary concepts in live and film programming, for allowing us to enter the wonderful world which he inhabited, making us feel young again, the Television Academy and children of all ages take pride in the induction of Walt Disney into the Hall of Fame. And to accept for Walt Disney is his wife, Ms. Lillian Disney. First, I want to introduce these two gentlemen, Walt and my grandsons. This is Chris, Christopher Disney, Walter Elias Disney. And I wanted to tell you how happy we are to be here tonight. And I also want to tell you how proud we are to pick up this award for Walt. And I want to thank you for my family, for myself, and for my Walt. Thank you all.